So my name is Alistair Allen, I'm the Head of Documentation at Raspberry Pi. And uh, what's the activity here at the Embedded World? So we're here talking about uh, RP2040, our own uh, microcontroller chip. It's our first silicon, our custom ASIC designed in Cambridge by Raspberry Pi. You say, what ASIC uh, so it's custom silicon. It's, it's uh, a dual core Cortex M0 Plus um, with uh, running at 133 megahertz, 264 kilobytes of RAM, and up to 16 megabytes of QSSPI flash off chip. So, do you have it on the board right now? Yes, uh, we have. Uh, to find the right PIO program. Just we actually the giving them out. Control. Yes, we are. We are giving away 25,000 um, uh, Raspberry Pi Picos will be given away this week. Thank you. So it's how... Since when are you making this Pico? So uh, Raspberry Pi Pico was launched in um, January 2021. Um, and the chip was made available in June the same year. So you can buy the chip in volume right now at uh, $1 for single unit price or down to 70 cents per chip for uh, a reel of three and a half thousand, I think. Cortex M0 Plus. Yes, dual core. It's, uh, it's beautiful architecture, right? Yes, so the, um, the ARM architecture is, uh, it, it, it's, um, it's what we regarded as a low-end um, ARM Cortex uh, chip, uh, ARM Cortex M chip. But on the other hand, the design of the RP2040 is extremely off-axis. There is a large amount of RAM for a Cortex M0 Plus. The bus fabric of the chip is um, and uh, it's cycle accurate all the way up to um, the maximum clock rate. Uh, Additionally, the, along with the two um, Cortex M cores, there's also PIO, which is programmable I/O, which is unique to RP2040. This is uh, not, uh, state machines from the core, which are optimized for dealing with GPIO. So these can be used independently of the two main cores. So instead of bit banging protocols on your main cores, you can actually use the PIO state machines. You're programming the machine uh, machine uh, machine. You program them, the program them with machine code, and they can actually handle protocols. So if you want CAN bus, if you want HD, um, DVID, if you want an extra SPI or like a couple of extra UARTs, you can just implement them on PIO. Not burden your main cores. Use your main cores for other pro for your main codes, and then just implement your I/O on the state machines. Good for retro gaming. There's no display, right? No, no, there's no display, but you can do uh, DVID or VGA um, because of the PIO. You can actually play Doom on this. So we actually, if you go to rptl.io slash Doom on Pico, um, you can find you'll find an article about uh, linking to the GitHub where you can download the source code and you can play multiplayer Doom on a microcontroller. That's what people are asking, can it run Doom? It can run Doom. And there's one guy saying, um, but this is just I love Raspberry Pi RP2040. What's this one? This is the RP2040 right here. And when can we see the Bluetooth Low Energy in RP2040? So, uh, Raspberry Pi does not talk about free unannounced products, so um, not going to answer that one. Uh, not that it's not not yeah. have a GPU, right. it's mostly an MCU. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm a C programmer, really. Yeah. So uh, I Pico is more in a league of an Arduino. So you, you, you want. Stuff, right. so um, it is a microcontroller. You don't run Linux on this. Unlike the rest of our boards, this is a um, bare metal product. So you. Um, you write, can do address it with uh, our own CSDK. You can run MicroPython, CircuitPython. It will run FreeRTOS. Uh, there's a FreeRTOS SMP port. Um, I think it's one of two boards supported by the SMP port. Um, and there's also a, a bunch of other language ports. But yeah, this is a microcontroller. It's not a, a Linux board. Uh, can you reintroduce well, yourself? Like, what do you do? The so I'm the, the head of documentation at Raspberry Pi. So if it's written down, it's my problem. So you wrote that all so that was I didn't know. I, I think that's physically impossible for one human being. Um, so I did quite a lot of the, the getting started, introductory material, 
but the, the data sheets really have to be written by the, the people that designed the ASIC. It's like you can't get it. No one else can write that. But, um, it has to be written in good English. Yes. Right? Yes. And uh, how long have you been with the Raspberry Pi? Are you so, the founder? Uh, certainly not, no. Um, I got brought on two years ago to bring the documentation for RP2040 and Pico when we were just taping out the, our, our ASIC. So I've been with Pi for about two and a half years now. Can you uh, mention some of the amazing projects people do so uh, I, I have some, some really amazing stuff with RP, done with RP2040. It's um, the, the fact that you can get dual monitor DVI out of a microcontroller, a Cortex M0 Plus, is insane. And there's, uh, if you go to, if you look for HDMI SOC, Pico HDMI SOC, you can actually find the, the board designs for HD, to add HDMI to the Raspberry Pi Pico, and that will let you put out full HD at about 30 frames a second, I believe, from a microcontroller, which is an insane thing to have achieved. That was done by Luke Wren, who's one of the one of the, our own uh, board designers, um, ASIC designers. Um, there's some really amazing stuff being put out by our design partners. If you look at the stuff from Pimeroni, there's um, uh, a sort of Game Boy-like sort of uh, console that's, that's really quite amazing. And we've seen everything from balloon trackers to um, video control systems. Uh, people are building custom keyboards around it. Um, if you can talk, if you talk to IO, you can do it with the RP2040. Is it a little bit of a departure of uh, the Cortex A stuff? That sure, absolutely. It's our, we're, we're well known for our, our single board computers, and this is our first microcontroller product. Um, it's also our first piece of silicon that we designed ourselves. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely a departure from where we are. We, we call it Franchise 2. How's it different from the other Cortex M0 Plus? So we designed uh, the, um, the RP2040 after years of using other people's microcontrollers. It, it was basically designed to be the microcontroller that we wanted to use. So it's cycle perfect all the way, uh, because of the way it's designed, it's cycle perfect all the way up to the point where it will fail. You will absolutely get replicable results. The, the bus fabric is insanely huge compared to um, other chips in this range, which means that you can push data across this far more easily. Um, when, I, when I was the first coming on, when I was first being talked about to come on board with this, um, Evan, who is the founder, I'm certainly not the founder, um, sat me down in a room and we whiteboarded, he whiteboarded up this chip and it was like the first thing he drew was the bus fabric, which if you know anything about chip design is a really weird place to start when describing how a chip is put together. Normally you start with the cores and Evan started with the bus fabric and that's, that is the difference with RP2040, it's, the, it's designed to be flexible. It has hardware GPIO, it's hardware SPI, I2C, but you can implement pretty much any protocol you need, like I2S, DVID, um, CAN bus in PIO. So that it's designed for flexibility and for input output. How, how was the experience of designing the chip? So I am not a chip designer. I, um, I only play one on TV. Um, but I, 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 you were in that movie, right? <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Um, so, designing a chip is uh, an insanely specialized jo uh, job description. It's, um, there, there aren't that many people that do it. And we have an absolutely amazing ASIC team at Raspberry Pi that we, that's been brought together. Um, this is our first piece of silicon. Like, we've been working on this for about five years before it was released. So, um, designing a chip is an interesting experience and, I, and I've really been privileged to, to work with the folks that have been doing that. So, Raspberry Pi 5, when can, can you let us As I said, we do not talk about pro unannounced products. So, no, I am not telling you when Raspberry Pi 5 is going to be released. So, what features is going to have? I'm not going to talk about that either. And, uh, so, we've right. got the drivers uh, for OpenOCD. <coughs> Raspberry Pi has done a lot of things to make the world a better place, right? Yeah, so um, one, of, one of the things that we did during the pandemic is that our, um, our boards ended up in uh, ventilators. We were really proud of that. Um, 
the there's obviously there is the educational the outreach thing with the there is an, the entire Raspberry Pi Foundation that's concentrated around education uh, education and getting kid children started with computers. You educated like a, a million robot makers. Yes. Or actually yeah. several million. Yeah. All over the world. I mean, and these robots I are going to take care of us. Have a the future. Machine, which I run All right. Cool. Linux Thanks a lot. Thank you. And on that, it's been a busy show here, right? What's your channel? Uh, why is it so busy here? Like people just queuing up for more information to get the boards, to get the bags. We're just very, very sexy. <laughs> and the t-shirts, we have t-shirts too. No, actually. Cool. Thanks a lot.